Today's video is a project that is long overdue and also much requested as I made a very short-lived mini-series talking about my $15 server rack that I picked up that I had to barely fit in my car and get over to our apartment and build cool stuff in it. Uh, didn't go super far with it and I've also been needing to... What was that? Did you flick me off? For the server rack. <laughs> My wife is super happy about the server rack purchase. I'll say that much. But I've also been needing to make some network upgrades and some storage upgrades as I've talked about a few times now because I started running out of space. So I reached out and of course this video is sponsored by Synology and mainly Western Digital who have hooked me up with their wonderful WD Red drives. I've talked about them a few times on the channel here. They are their NAS optimized drives made to run pretty much with 24 seven uptime in RAID configurations and in your NAS servers and stay cool and quiet and survive even the most brutal of storage capacities, mine own included. And so the first step in this project was of course getting my Synology NAS hooked up with these drives. So we went with the DS2419 plus, which is a 12 bay main storage NAS runs fairly quiet compared to most other things that I have uh, and keeps everything nice and secure and I have it expanded with a dual 10 gigabit SFP plus networking card. Loaded it up with the WD drives we went with six 12 terabyte red drives and six 10 terabyte red drives and I set it up in a Synology Hybrid RAID 2 which allows me up to two drives of failover so if you know up to two drives can fail and me swap them out without losing my data and with while that does mean I end up with less capacity because I have about 132 terabytes of raw storage capacity of the drives that leaves me with about 98 I believe terabytes of actual working space that does mean that when I'm working with this much data I have the safety and redundancy of losing a drive or two which is incredibly important when you have this much capacity running at once you don't want to just run bare RAID 0 and go nuts. So I got that set up, got the file share made and mapped to a network drive on my computer, got everything set up, didn't run any t into any major hitches there, but it does take a little while to build the RAID and do the consistency check and everything like that. So be a little bit patient. Installed the 10 gigabit networking card and immediately we run into the wall of my first problem in that I don't actually have any additional 10 gig networking over here at my storage server. Seems ironic, but it's, uh, I've set up a kind of complicated networking setup that we're hopefully addressing here. You see, I started my 10 gigabit networking adventures running with SFP Plus, uh, with Mellanox Connect X cards, and a little bit of an older standard, but that's because the RJ45, the CAT6, CAT7, CAT8, you know, all of that 10 gig networking equipment is way more expensive and typically not available in like big configurations fanless and I since I have everything running in a small apartment here I need it to be fanless because that enterprise gear gets super loud when you start it up and when it's running and I can't afford for there to be a jet engine running in my apartment when I need to record stuff here all the time can't just turn it off every five minutes so I'm gonna have to break out some some diagrams to explain how my current networking runs because I have my AT&T modem The problem is I'm bottlenecked by that one gigabit line run to my main switch. So I've got to completely do like a switcheroo of my switches here. Wow, I did not mean to. Anyway, <laughs> we've got two different switches from micro Microtic, I believe is how you say it, that are hopefully going to help us out here. The first one, uh, Window gave me from level one techs. I do need to upgrade the firmware, but is one of their cloud router switches that has 24 gigabit NICs. Much, much like my TrendNet one, but then two SFP plus 10 gigabit hookups. Now, I can't use this on the workbench side because that would only give me the connection from my main switch and then out to one NAS. Doesn't give me any room for expandability since you do need the uplink. So what this will let me do, however, is swap that for my main switch I currently have, which has four 10 gigabit NICs. Hook everything up to this over on the home side, hook my PC into one and hook the extension cable that runs 300 feet over here to the second one. Since I'm not using all four 10 gigabit ports on that switch, this should be fine. And then over here, this is where it gets a little complicated because I'm using that TrendNet switch I already have, putting it in this rack, and I'm going to hook it up to this second 10 gigabit switch. And the reason that I need to move that switch over is so that I can use the bonding on each of those NASs to then keep a multi-gigabit connection to the main 10 gigabit line. 
This is stupidly complicated. But what I went with, and I'm hoping this is the right choice, is another Microtic switch. But this one has 16 SFP plus 10 gigabit plugs, which should allow me as much expansion as I can take advantage of at the moment. I think my main NAS only has one 10 gigabit uplink, but if it has two, I can use two for that, two for my new one, and then I've got room for expansion. I can add a 10 gigabit card back into my extra server that we're gonna be taking a look at in part two of this video. Plenty of room for expansion and console management. Now, I was under the impression this was a fanless model and there are two fans in it. Now there are redundant power supplies, which is pretty cool, but there are two fans in it, as well as this beefy heatsink here. So hopefully these aren't loud fans because everything I read said this was a quiet and I was under the impression fanless switch. The complication we're gonna run into is getting all of, because all of my switches so far have been unmanaged. These are managed. Getting these two to communicate and keep my subnets intact and all of that is gonna be crazy. We're gonna dive in. So since I have my NAS already hooked up, ready to go, booted up, like I said, set up the storage. My first goal, because we're still using the internet over on the main switch that I need to move out, is my main goal is just to swap the current 10 gigabit run to my main NAS to connect it to this switch. Get this switch set up and configured, update the firmware, get all the settings hooked up, and then be able to connect my secondary NAS at 10 gigabit speeds and make sure the throughput is what we want. Minor small goal, we'll see if it happens. Another limitation I'm gonna quickly run into is I need to buy more SFP Plus cables, but I needed to see what I needed first, and this is the only extra one I have available, but we're literally, I am just going to take this switch, slap it over here next to the NAS, make sure it's quiet, and make sure that we can get fast speeds out of this Synology box. Because my current, my DS17, or 1817 Plus, that is my current active, you know, what I edit off of storage array, I'm only getting about three to four gigabits per second, which is certainly a massive improvement over the gigabit speeds I was limited to on my previous boxes, but it's obviously not saturating 10 gigabit. I don't expect to fully saturate it, especially since I'm working from drives themselves on my local computer that can't saturate full 10 gig, but I'd like to see a little bit more speed out of it. And these WD drives, they are perfectly capable in the right RAID configuration of delivering very fast speeds you know, across an entire RAID. So I'm hoping with this bigger NAS having so many more drives, as long as the CPU can keep up, we should be good. Take off the side panel and the room immediately gets louder. Oh, I was in the middle of rendering a video from that NAS. I really hope I didn't disconnect it while the video was rendering. <laughs> I assumed it was done. It looks like it was but I'll have to double check the render because it may have just crapped out in the middle of it and been like, oh, well, I don't know where the footage is anymore. Good luck. It definitely makes noise at boot. It's not good. Oh. But it's super quiet just running. Yeah, I'm okay with that. It is very quiet just running. And then we're gonna run to the console, I guess. This will create a loop of my switches, but hopefully be fine. No, I shouldn't do that. It should be fine. I should be able to access it over the 10 gigabit. So I'm gonna hop into management, see if we can set this up. Okay, well, confusingly, my main server was already working. I was able to grab the thumbnail from it and it seemed fine. If we go to edit two, we can access it. What about the new one? That one's accessible as well. This is confusing. This is a managed switch. It even says before you connect anything, this device is not pre-configured other than an IP address on the master ethernet port. You can connect to any port. All ports are switched together by default. Okay. I was under the impression I'd actually set some stuff up here. So hopefully everything's running at full speed. I have, I can copy a big file here. This one's maybe a little too big. We'll do a six gigabyte file and we're just gonna go to the new NAS, the DS2419. Let's see what kind of speeds we get. 345, eh, 
359. That's only like 3 gigabits per second at most. Send 3.4 gigabits per second. That's still good. Like, we still have a 10 gig connection there. But it could be better. But I could optimize some settings in the switch, maybe. And then if I copy the same thing to the new NAS, or the old NAS, let's just make sure that's still functioning same speed. Yeah. 3.4 gigabits per second. So it's definitely working already. We now have two NASs hooked up with 10 gig. And we can fine tune from here. So that's really cool to see. I didn't even have to connect anything. It's just there. So that's a good start. Alright, so on my new NAS, I do need to go in here and edit the networking settings to optimize for jumbo frames and a 9000 MTU value. So I can set 9000 there. Restart network services. I'm not sure where enabled jumbo frame is supposed to be here. But maybe that'll get us a little bit more speed out of it. Because I know this RAID should be capable of a little bit more than my previous one. Maybe not, though. Maybe not. Alright. Network interface, LAN 5, jumbo frame is now enabled by doing that. Okay, so if we come here to my fast NVMe drive, do we have a big file? These are all going to be small files. Oh, wait. 4.83 gigabytes. That one counts. To our new NAS, paste. Okay, so we're not seeing a huge improvement, but the bottleneck may be this other switch I'm connected to. So I'm hoping if I can chain the two microtic switches, which will make the connection to my main computer, that will hopefully el eliminate that. But we've got to do some switch juggling before we get to that point. Alright, next I want to check out the management console for the new switch. I will say, I was concerned about the fans. They do make a little bit of noise when it boots up, but otherwise... This thing stays completely quiet, so good to go there. And they do have a power cord retention clip with those power supplies to make sure it doesn't come loose because I just knocked it loose when I was plugging stuff in. So I'm really liking the switch so far, but I haven't dug into the management interface yet. And that is what I am looking to do here. So here is my Chronix Winbox software. It allows you to navigate and find the servers of it or the routers and devices on your network. So I went ahead and found the Microtic router that I already hooked up. So we're going to go ahead and connect to it. Apparently, instead of using, you know, web UIs, this is how they configure things. So once I connected locally to with a laptop to change the quick set IP address here to one in the subnet that my desktop can encounter, I can actually access it and configure it with their Winbox software here and manually set a password for me to connect with. There we go. We now have a password on it, so it's protected, and you can change it between router and bridge mode as well. I keep it in bridge mode because that's what I actually need here. There is an update menu there, but I, it wasn't working for me, so I have to manually update. There is a lot of configuration here that honestly is probably above my head. Like, this is over my head. It is not stuff I mess with a lot. I am honestly not super big into networking stuff. Oddly enough, but what you can do is you can browse the different port management here. Let's see if I can make this bigger. Yeah, so it has its own little like Windows UI. So you can you can view the transfer rates and packets and everything of the individual ports. And you can see here part of the reason this may not be going fast is the actual MTU values for these SFP plus ports are all set to 1500 instead of 9000. So I would like to see if I could change that and I don't honestly know where that's going to be but I would like to look into it MTU here we go so if I can check that set it to 9000 click apply let's see if that does anything 1592 is that the highest it can go that is the question lots of information here there is a wiki for router OS that I will have to dig into to fully optimize this but this is where you can manage some of this stuff so I'm just going to Set that to <laughs> as high as it will go while I'm using the ports here. And then in the future, we will see if we get an improvement from that. But overall, this router OS is very impressive. So there's a lot to dig into here. But I am honestly pretty stoked that I have this much granular control over the switch. This is my first time diving in with managed stuff. So hopefully we can get all of this sorted. And we do have a crazy storage server full of 90 four to 98 terabytes of available 
storage capacity that I'm probably gonna fill up over the next year or two for video projects. And that's pretty cool. It's, it runs pretty fast, about four gigabits per second. I am gonna keep tweaking the storage server configurations and things like that to see if we can get that a little bit faster with the switches and yada yada. And part of that may be an older network card in my computer as well and overall try to optimize this, but we now have a beefy server that this will be my main active project server. So this will be what I run all of my current ongoing edits from and projects that haven't been fully finalized or approved for like publication or anything. And then they'll be kicked over to my other two NASs, the DS 1817 plus and the DS uh, 916 plus for archive and things like that. And the next stop is getting a more proper, reliable offsite solution going, but that's a lot more drives. So that might be a part three. We'll see. I, of course, wanted to again give a huge thanks to the sponsors of this episode, Synology, for hooking us up with the DS2419 NAS and WD Western Digital for their WD Red Drives. They are what powers most of my servers here in the studio. I even have a big, beefy 8 terabyte drive in my desktop, even though it's, you know, it's a slower 5400 RPM drive because it's a red it still provides you know, great reliable bulk storage for my main desktop where I have a lot of files come in and out that I need somewhere to sit them before it gets put on the network or somewhere else. And they have been super reliable, super fast, and have done a great job keeping my insane storage needs afloat. If you have more interest in checking them out, I will have a link, I don't think it's an affiliate link, in the description down below, of course, to check them out for yourself. Highly recommend them for all of your storage needs for especially NAS stuff, and they do have some great stuff on the WD Black front as well. And I will have more videos related to this topic of storage servers and my video compression stuff and things like that in the description below as well. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe for more tech education. Go check us out on Floatplane where you can get early access to videos, behind the scenes content, things like that. You'll be able to see part two of this video before anybody else as we clean up this mess that I have built here into something more realistic because this is just kind of sprawled out and I wanted to make sure it was working as I get their crazy router OS set up and things like that. So thanks so much. I'll see you next time.